Maureen Brubaker Farley was born and raised in Sioux City, Iowa. In 1971, when she was 17 years old, she moved to Cedar Rapids. Maureen wanted to be closer to her husband David, who was serving time in Anamosa State Penitentiary. She quickly found work at a diner in town. On September 17, 1971, Maureen was last seen buying a pack of cigarettes. Later that day, she failed to pick up her check from work. Then, on September 20th, when Maureen failed to show up at work, her employer reported her as missing. Four days later, on September 24th, her body was found by two teenage boys in a wooded ravine near a landfill. Her body was on top of a trunk of an abandoned junk car. The two boys at first believed it was a woman sleeping, so they continued down the road to hunt. Upon returning to the abandoned car, they decided to take a closer look. It was then that they noticed the discoloration in her body. They ran back home to inform the police of what they had stumbled upon. An autopsy revealed she passed away from a skull fracture after being hit on the head. Investigators noted that there were clear signs that she had been carried and placed here at the crime scene after her life was taken elsewhere. At the crime scene, investigators were also able to collect DNA evidence belonging to the suspect. Six months after her body was found, Maureen's mother wrote a letter to the Grand Rapids police saying that George Smith was responsible. George worked at the same diner where Maureen worked. He also worked at a liquor store near her apartment. Police interviewed him but did not have the evidence to charge him, or anyone else for that matter, so the case went cold. Recently in 2021, the Cedar Rapids Police Department cold case unit took another look at the case. They took the DNA found at the crime scene that belonged to the suspect and created a DNA profile. They then tested it to see if it matched the DNA of George Smith, and it did. The only problem was that jackass passed away in 2013, at the age of 94. Maureen's younger sister Lisa said that she felt a lot of emotions, including relief and closure. She also said that she and her family are satisfied with the evidence. Whenever anybody would pass from this world, my mom said, Well, now they're up in heaven with Maureen, and they must be happy and they know the answers. I just didn't want to wait that long. I didn't want us to wait until we go to the next world. I wanted answers in this world. Police Chief Wayne Germain had this to say in a statement. No matter how much time has passed, our officers are committed to seeking out justice for all victims of violent crime, as well as their families. I am extremely proud of the generations of Cedar Rapids officers that contributed to bringing this once cold case to a resolution. Maureen's mother Mary, now 86, revealed why she told the investigators back in 1971 that it was George Smith. He apparently asked investigators constantly about updates in the case. His work at the liquor store would also see him making a lot of trips to that landfill as part of a hauling service. Mary also had this to say about the fact that he can't be prosecuted. We just figure he'll suffer in hell for it. What's done is done, and at least we know it was him, and we can quit wondering. We can let it go. In 1986, a sanitation worker in Greenwich, Connecticut, found the body of a newborn baby boy in his truck when he emptied a dumpster. An autopsy showed that the baby had been strangled and that he was less than a day old. Investigators interviewed people who lived close to the dumpster trying to find out who the parents are, but couldn't gather any useful information. DNA was just coming out of a very early science in 1986, so it was not advanced enough to find relatives of the baby at the time. In 2019, investigators from Greenwich Police Department took the DNA sample that they had from the baby and made use of genetic genealogy to find his family members. Using this method, they discovered a person who they believed was the mother of the baby. Investigators traveled to a house in Lake Mary, Florida, where they believe the woman now lives. They collected garbage and recycling left in the bin in front of the house. From these items, they got a DNA match. They showed that the woman is indeed the mother of the baby. The woman is 62-year-old Janita Phillips. Investigators decided to interview her. She then confessed. Janita said that she kept the pregnancy a secret to everyone. She gave birth to a baby boy in her apartment, strangled him, and then left him in a bag in the dumpster outside the building in Greenwich, Connecticut. Court documents show that back in 1986, Janita was interviewed, but then she denied any knowledge of what had happened and refused to take a blood test. In Janita's statement to the police, she wrote that she knew her husband did not want any more kids 
and had big dreams of becoming a fashion designer. I didn't want to crash his dreams and fall down the rabbit hole of having a bunch of kids and stuck with bills and not being able to care for them or get to achieve his dreams, reads the statement in part. DNA has also confirmed that Janita's husband is the father of the baby boy. According to her, he had no knowledge of what she did. Attorney Lindy Urso is representing Janita and says her client is devastated about that time of her life. She's overcome whatever happened here and she lived a stellar life, never been arrested. This is her first time ever being arrested. She's raised a family, been married for all this time. She's been working steadily for 30 years in the same industry, Urso said. It seems like Lindy Urso does not have a problem with what Janita did. I find it quite ironic that Janita was caught because of her DNA that she left in the trash matched the DNA of the baby boy she also left in the trash.